Here we go. Um, so uh, when last we left off, um, uh, our intrepid uh, gang of um, Taiviki, Muirin, Taimi, uh, Topias, Anika, and Durbin had finally arrived after several days of um, travel across the highlands and then some lowlands um, arrived at the um, Venani village of Saltwall. And I will, let's see here, pull that up. There we go, there's the village. Oh boy. Um, and as I mentioned last time, you guys were sort of, uh, you were approaching from across that ridge in the, in the distance there. So, uh, you know, at first it's like um, uh, sort of light wooded landscape. Um, you see, a, and then you see a couple of little um, buildings which appear to be made out of some kind of um, clay or um, it's like a, a pale, um, waddle and daub kind of thing. Um, and you notice that embedded in um, and decorating a lot of the, um, the walls and the roof line are um, shells. Um, and I guess seashells, you guys have probably seen some kind of like freshwater, you know, shells before, but these are different kinds of shells. So they're very quite beautiful and strange to you. Um, and if you recall, um, oh yeah, I should back out of that and, uh, Jump over to remind us all of who helped you get to this town. Um, this um, goat rider patrol, one of the one of the village watch, um, uh, found you uh, approaching and um, and then led you back to the village. So um, and actually rode ahead and then let people know that you were coming. So by the time you arrive, there's a cluster of uh, cluster of villagers around that the little opening there's a little sort of there's no actual gate there's just this opening in the wall mm -hmm. um and you come through you know there's like a as you if you recall uh venati are um you know four four and a half feet tall on average adults so they're um relative to humans they're small people um and you enter the village and there's a group of very curious and very excited locals who greet you and especially, um, you know, people rush forward to embrace Durbin. And um, we had a moment where Taimi <laughs> sees this uh, structure in the middle of the village, um, which looks all too familiar and very different from the more kind of organic, I mean, they're sort of roughly squared off um, buildings that the Venati, um, but they're all kind of rounded edges. They're all made out of this kind of, um, sun-baked clay so they have a very different uh look to them than this harsh triangular shape there in the middle of the village mm -hmm. and, um yeah so okay. that's that's where you guys you guys have just arrived uh is durbin staying with us or is he like piecing out oh no he's um he's excitedly telling everybody who you are um, how, you know, it's very clear the way he's pointing um, and gesturing and explaining. And then, um, in fact, I'm going to jump over and show you somebody else. This woman um, emerges from the crowd and um, Durbin uh, speaks to her. And it's very clear from the way that um, the villagers sort of behave and defer to her that she is the local, the leader. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, she listens to him and then um, comes forward to you and in um, halting uh, words uh, expresses her thanks for your uh, safe return of their missing woodcutter who they thought for sure had perished because he has been gone for, you know, something like half a year. Mm -hmm. He was gone a long time. So nobody expected to see him again. So Atmaya um, welcomes you into the village and um, uh, asks you to consider yourself um, guests of the of the Vinati villagers. 
that salt wall salt wall is your home or as she calls it sala sala tavela um it might be a tough conversation but i wouldn't mind maybe trying to get a conversation with her alone to kind of discuss what happened and maybe ask about the structure and what their relationship to the high court might be. Okay. So you're going to be looking for an opportunity for that? Yeah. Yeah, so everybody's sort of um, clapping. Yeah, go ahead, Paiviki. I think that probably uh, Paiviki like, is kind of like smiling to people and we're sort of like looking around at everybody and taking it in. And I, she kind of draws, um, uh, Taini and Moirin are over, and it's like, what do we, what do you think we should do with this uh, structure here? I wonder when, how long it's been, or when they were taken over. Uh, they may not have been taken over. They might have. They might be welcoming them with open arms. They might not True. know the the wolf that they that they allow into their home. I haven't seen any word keepers. I haven't seen a word giver since we got here. True. Um, well, maybe there's not much to do besides uh, let them. Uh, I'll just wait and see what the what the um, lay of the land is here. We um, we have the shell that shows the map of the town, maybe or the map of the um, the, the the bay. It was those like, um, burial pyres, right? Yeah, maybe we should um, hold off on telling everybody about that until we find out exactly what's happening here in town. I agree. How did, do we remember how Durbin um, got captured? He, he said he uh, was cutting wood. Yeah, he was out. Um, he was in the habit of traveling. <clears throat> um, he, didn't, he didn't go that far away from the village, but, um, you know, he has a, there's an area where he regularly um, harvests wood and while he remembers is just being out one day and then doing that, doing that job. And then the next thing he knew, you guys were um, shaking him out of his um, stupor in a cave. <laughs> he has very little, he has, I guess in the time that you've known him, he has fragmentary images and memories of what went on while he was in the service of the sorcerer. Um, but he doesn't have a clear idea of how he got there or anything like that. And as far as everybody here is concerned, one day he just never came back from cutting wood. Yeah. Well, maybe we can share the story of the sorcerer uh, capturing him, at least. Um, Moiran, what do you think? I mean, yeah, we sort of got to lay low and find out as much as we can without scaring anyone or making too many people uncomfortable, I think. Yeah, if we come out torches blazing on the high court, Andy, I, I, it's been a couple of weeks, I, for, I forget the name of the race of people that are in command. The Corkane. 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 Um, Corkane. Oh, uh, uh, and then, um, yeah, if we come out torches blazing against them and they are like willing allies, they might, uh, they might imprison us or worse. Uh, but I think if we tell our tale and tell it truthfully, I think we can gleam their feelings on them and then press it further from there if need be. Um, I wonder how they're going to react to me. Because uh, Paiviki 
is a court king, or at least she looks like one. She was born as one, <clears throat> even if she wasn't ra raised with them. Um, you, I mean, you did notice when you first arrived, the crowd of people, there was some sense of, it was this combination of excitement at Durbin's presence, a little bit of trepidation at the fact that uh, at basically all three of you, who very, seemed like very strange and different folk, um, and then that was tempered by Durbin's excitement and singing your praises. So everybody kind of warmed up to that a little bit. But you can tell that there's a little bit of um, um, just from furtive glances and some, you know, there's a child that sort of can't stop staring at you. Like there's a, uh, there's definitely some anxiety around your presence, I guess I would say. And, and you can only attribute to, that, to the fact that you're so different um, from them. And um, Durbin comes over to you after sort of chatting with um, some of his friends and says, um, my friends, come, come to the Saram, the Saram. Come, we must eat, we must drink. I am home. So he's kind of, he wants you to come with him to the, to the, to the main gathering place in the village. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get some freaking food. <laughs> okay, so you uh, yeah. um, you make your way to a, a, a low uh, single story um, building um, with um, a walled courtyard. Oh, and he says, ah, but before we go there, we must, you must see the bay, you must see the sea. And so he uh, takes you over to, um, You know, you've smelled it. Uh, there's a different, the wind here is different than anything you've experienced. Everything is brighter and um, this is a, the sun, it's, it's a cloudy day, but the sunlight's coming down in these very visible sort of shafts of sunlight. Mm -hmm. And he takes you over towards the big statue that Taimi had noticed before. And the statue is basically um, a statue of a woman um, from the hips as if emerging from the ground, from the hips up. Um, uh, you know, basically naked, except with um, shells decorating her form and um, discreetly covering up the parts of her body that, you know, for whatever Venati reason would be considered um, uh, polite. And um, uh, it, it appears to be made of some kind of painted plaster, or maybe it's that same clay that the buildings are made out of. And holding over her head is some kind of um, large, uh, like it could be a big bowl that she's holding over her head. And in front of her is clearly um, an area where there's like a kind of fire pit and where they um, gather to celebrate stuff and Durbin brings you over past that statue. <coughs> um, he reaches, but when he, when he comes into proximity to the statue, he, um, he makes a kind of elaborate kind of bow and gets down on one knee to, um, to honor the figure represented by the statue. Um, and then looks back at you and kind of uh, expects you to do the same. Or, or to offer some kind of, clearly he's expecting you to, do, to offer some kind of respect to this figure. Who's the, who is that Durbin? Um, uh, Mukata, the queen of the sea. She brought us here when our land was claimed by the waves. Um, would, would we even have words for sea? No, nah, that, that's not even. That's we would. I think that the sea probably exists in stories. Yeah. Right? Because people came, it may have been that originally your people came from over the water and people have traveled through your village who've been to the, not to this, this sea, but the, to the north, there's another one where the capital city is. Mm -hmm. um, but you yourselves have not. I mean, maybe Mwiren has seen the ocean before. I'm not sure. That's up to up to Mwiren to decide. Um, so you know, <laughs> to ask. So you know what it is, um, but this would be the first time you laid eyes on it. Um, if I Vicky happily. Uh kind of kneels down and bows to Mukata, gives her respects. 
And uh, what about Taimi and Mirren? Um, Taimi will nod her head. <laughs> uh, Mirren um, uh, imitates what Durbin okay. uh, kneeling. Yeah. Got it. Um, and then he um, uh, ushers you over to the cliff and you hear the kind of distant crashing of waves. There's all kinds of like, um, you know, the cawing of gulls, um, white seabirds are kind of circling in the sky. And you, you know, as you grow close to that, go grow, grow close to that cliff, you see that the water's kind of revealed below you. <clears throat> and it's quite a precipitous drop, but, um, you know, laid out before you is this expansive bay, the far side of which is, Shrouded in mist, you can't even see it, but for all you know, it's an ocean that goes on forever. Um, and down there yeah. in the water, you see a number of rocky islands, um, which you recall, according to Durbin, were represented on that shell, that scratched into the surface of that shell. Yeah. Taimi's at a loss for words but uh, uh, eventually composes herself and asks, how, how far to the other side, Durbin? Oh, it is um, uh, half a day. Only half a day it would take by boat. Oh. So it's a, it's a, a large lake or a, a wide river. Oh, this way, my friend, this way, straight ahead. Yes, that half a day. This way, and he points kind of down the bay. Um, and that just, you know, everything to you, it sort of fades out at a certain distance, but he says, that yeah. way, um, the whole world. Whole, whole world. We all live in the sea. We just don't know it. There is, there's no other side. There's nothing, what holds it in? <laughs> it, is, it is all there is. And we are in it, even now. Paiviki just, <laughs> Paiviki just sits down on the edge of the cliff and, and contemplates, stares off into the nothingness of the ocean. Um, Paiviki notices when you sit down on that cliff and you see beneath your feet there are these little ledges and walkways as the village kind of um, climbs down towards the shore there and you see um, a number of fishing boats turned on their backs down on the rocky beaches below. And most surprising of all, if you look from, can you see my cursor there? Mm -hmm. So if you, yeah. Paiviki kind of looks this way and you see this ridge right here, there's a herd yeah. of goats actually on this steep cliff. Like it seems impossible to you, but there's goats actually kind of on that cliff and they're, they appear to be eating or um, trying to get, they're, they're sort of um, moving around, getting at something that's on the cliff itself. Yeah. You have brought me here as Mukata brought us from our first home. Mukata honors you. And come, come, we go to the Saram where everyone will celebrate your, your greatness. Okay. Taimi shakes herself out of her, 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 think, her uh, contemplations on infinity and, and all this. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember that um, uh, Paiviki read a book called The Island of Understanding uh, about um, a mythical but perhaps real place that um, is also a metaphor for understanding that is somewhere out there in the ocean. Um, and it, the book also mentions the Venati religion and um, uh, 
something I wrote down the note, the beyond the furthest horizon. Oh, I guess that's where the island is. Yeah. Um, so it's all coming, becoming real, I guess. Oh yeah, right, right. Because that horizon. So she'd probably, she'd probably, she'd probably heard of Mukata before in that book. Yeah, yeah absolutely, definitely. Uh, Mukata and other, there were some other Venati, um uh, deities mentioned yeah. uh, Mukata in particular because of her relationship to the sea was yeah um, yeah very familiar. So, Paiviki is is racking her brain for all the stuff that she read in that book. I don't think she brought it with her on this trip, but um, she's trying to remember all the names of the important people and places and stuff so that she can drop some names. Okay, she... <laughs> great. Um. So he um, ushers you back to this uh, this building with a courtyard. Um, there's the sound of a um, there's a plucking instrument, and um, somebody's playing some kind of double-headed drum. And there's uh, um, a kind of folk song being sung, and you're brought um, clay bowls of some kind of strong-smelling uh, mead. Um, and amongst the Venati gathered in this place, one figure stands out in particular, um, especially to Mirin, who's this person who's taller than all the Venati and paler skinned and pointy eared, clearly an elf. Um, so, you know, instantly you all kind of, you know, all eyes. Um, turn towards this person who stands out not only for the color of her skin and her height, but her um, red hair, which is very striking. Um, and um, they, they sort of nod, um, nod in greeting to you from across this crowded courtyard. Do you think this person is younger or? Younger than you? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Not not a maybe not a well how old you know who knows about elf years but in, in terms of like you know in terms of like um, uh, young adulthood adulthood middle age where does where does um, we're in fall in the general scheme of things mm, like it's fifties uh, in human terms be fifties yeah in human terms okay yeah this person is is. Um, Mirren's going to guess that this person is just, you know, recently an adult, like a young adult. Hmm. And um, um, when there's a moment where you guys have a moment, um, uh, they come over and um, greet you directly and um, has a particularly uh it's a little a slight shyness but like um greets uh Mwirin with, with warmth and you know says some um says something in an elvish tongue that you know um the equivalent of um you know hail friend under um under uh how nice to to meet you under bright skies um which is like a some kind of elf greeting uh, that you say even to strangers if you are sort of being really um, friendly. Wow. Um, uh, so we're like in conversation distance? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, there's it's like a little bit noisy. There's like singing going on. People are celebrating Durbin and raising cups to him. And then Durbin's like pointing at Paiviki and um, uh, and everybody's like toasting Paiviki basically. Um, uh, and, and, and this this elf who introduces herself as Kuan um, uh, is, with, is basically with you guys in conversation. Yeah. Um. I'm drinking this mead as quickly as it is given to me. <laughs> so you're just like, Whoa. yeah, if, if it keeps on being offered, I keep on drinking it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anika, Anika is also partaking with gusto. 
Oh, and Topias has been sort of set up on a chair um, over in one corner of the courtyard and his leg has been lifted up um, and um, he's being brought food and stuff. Um, so they're kind of taking care of Topias too because he's injured. Yeah. Um, so can I ask her um, like how far she's traveled or when she got there? Um, I've only been here a week, but I've come, this is my third, third visit. I, I, I come, I like coming back here because the, the people are so kind. Um, and you? It's so oh. rare to run across another like us. <laughs> Yes, um, few of us wander far from home. In fact, I, I can't remember since I was, since I have been home ha having seen uh, another. I've not been to the capital, so I've, I've not seen any of our kind there. And, and in these Southern lands, there are few of us. Um. Do you think it's possible to like sense like her like is she like a trustworthy nature or like um is that someone that would open up about like what the people here are like or the town's been what the town's been through? So through conversation you're just trying to get a a feel and a sense of Yeah, would they, <laughs> would they be friendly or yeah. <laughs> go <laughs> That's okay. Um, why don't you? Let me perceive. I think well, perceive is out. <laughs> it's been replaced by um, uh, find answers. Um, I don't know if you have the latest version, John. No, I don't. I have. A... Yeah. So find answers is very similar, but it allows you to use wisdom, intelligence, or charisma. Um, and in this case, it sounds like you're trying to sense from your conversation, um, whether yeah. Quan is trustworthy. So that would be wisdom. Right. Or okay, you could use intelligence, if you were gonna sort of study their behavior, then it would be intelligence. I think Miran is more of a wisdom person. Okay. Okay. So that's, yeah, 2d6 plus your wisdom marker. Uh, okay, so, um, so I rolled in. Eight and then plus uh, my wisdom is what is it? You got uh, two. Oh, ten. Sorry. Plus, it is plus two. Look at that. Yeah, plus two. Yep. Plus so you two. Got ten. I cool. give you a clear and thorough answer, and you may ask follow-up questions based on what you could conceivably perceive from conversation. So sure. from Quan's body language and um, the way that she just kind of looks at you with very open, looks you directly in the eyes, very openly. And there's almost a kind of um, innocence about the way that she's interacting with you. <clears throat> like you don't get the sense that this person has been, um, is in any way jaded, even though they may have traveled a fair amount, um, they, have almost the kind of innocence of a child as they're looking at you. Um, and um, so your sense is that whatever this person says to you is going to be, you know, what they're thinking. Like, like they want, they, they, I mean, they might show discretion, but they, they seem entirely trustworthy. <clears throat> if anything, you oh. might be concerned that somebody could hoodwink them. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, that's good. Um, so if if I ask questions, would I be able to just ask her directly at this point then? Or yeah, 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 yeah. You can just have a conversation, and if there's any, um, you know, you feel like you can trust whatever it is she has to say, and she will, um, you know, give it to the best of her knowledge. She'll just have a conversation with you. Yeah. Is there anything you want to ask her? Um, I'll just say like, um, say that we've 
known Durbin for this adventure and he seems um, very kind and like excited to be here. Um, what does she know about um, this this town? Because um, she's visited three times. Um, why she keep coming back? <clears throat> well, she keeps coming back because she loves not only the people, but um, exactly what you're seeing here in front of you. Um, uh, she has, she, not as much as Taimi, but um, has been, this is probably her third bowl of mead that she's drinking. Um, she really enjoys that. And as you know, um, elves generally can hold their liquor. <laughs> so um, uh, three bowls of mead's no big deal. Um, and she really loves the, um, the music and the singing. Um, so those, those things are all the things that keep her coming back here. Um, but she says that the last time she came, um, the house of the Corcane was not here. So this is a new development. And she says, uh, and it's noisy enough where she doesn't have to speak in like hushed tones or kind of look over her shoulder, but she says basically like, um, it's not, things have not been good here. It's been very different since, since her last visit. Um. Does she know how many Corcane are um, occupying this town? She says that there is a woman named Elisa, the, um, the word giver, who is camped outside of town on the far side. And at her camp, um, she has... Uh, a guard of um, two of the word keepers. Do you remember? But um, so okay. from uh, just to let you know on this map on the right here, and you see this little uh, campsite. Uh -huh. She says that apparently a month ago, this is all stuff that Kwan picked up. You know, she only arrived here recently, but like um, she's gathered this from the people who know her and trust her that um, the Corcane just showed up and basically declared um, that uh, Salt Wall, because it fell within what they say is Corcane territory, Salt Wall is um, theirs and the order, order needs to be um, uh, installed. So they sort of made that declaration and um, uh, Akmaya, the local leader who you guys met, um, like tried to negotiate with them and tried to like, um, you know, this is clearly not a village to defend against an armed assault. Doesn't seem like a place that was ever subject to any kind of war or um, invasion. And they weren't really prepared for somebody to just come in and say, um, you know, somebody with superior armor and weapons to just say, well, this place belongs to us now. Um, but, um, so Atmaya tried to negotiate and then basically saw no choice but to like allow them to do what they were going to do. So they started to build the house. And meanwhile, of course, there were tensions rising. And um, one local uh, couldn't, uh, you know, basically uh, in, out of frustration and anger attacked um, one of the people who was building the house. and. Uh, that required, um, didn't require that, that forced a reaction from the, from the court cane and um, a villager was killed. And that sort of stopped everything dead. Um, uh, Eliza and her soldiers retreated to their camp. The construction of the house was stopped. Um, and so now there's this, um, an enormous amount of resentment and anger towards them. They haven't really set foot back in the, inside the village since then, but um, the offending, uh, two offending villagers were basically um, arrested and have been sent back toward the capital. Uh, much like um, the housekeeper 
of the word keeper of the word giver in your guys's hometown the one who stole the money right who everybody assumes is dead so two villagers were basically forcibly removed and are being um, to hear kawan's story like they're now being taken north towards the capital but meanwhile elisa and um her word keepers are camped out where again did you point oh, where are they camped out is that to, to the right side of the village here yeah so she tells you that whole story Um, can she describe like, so as the people, are they mostly non, I don't know, um, they're not like, a. there's no military or uh, there's like goat herders basically, right? Or are they actually like warrior? They're, like? they're mainly fisher folk. They have, there's orchards, okay. there's, um, you know, outside of town, there's actually a copper mine and a clay quarry. Um, they're craftspeople, um, but they, the, the extent of their armed defense is um, six of those goat riders, like the one that greeted you. Yeah. Uh, and one of them is one of the people that was uh, arrested. So there's basically five, uh, you know, local militia, right? They're basically um, villagers who are trained to ride and fight on these goats. Um, which is not insignificant. I mean, they're they're a small people, but you saw that goat with its horns and um, the spear that that person was carrying. You know, that's that's substantial. But you also remember that the word keepers have those crossbows and that armor, which really kind of um, gives them a kind of um, impregnable quality to them. And then there's the greater fear of what happens if you the same fear that you guys encountered which is if you do something to them more might come so that's the other threat kind of hanging over the head of the whole village and she says um Kawan says, she points um, outside of the courtyard. So it's a low um, clay wall or um, whatever this, it's like almost like a lime mixture. Um, there's a tree growing outside the courtyard and there's a little girl, I would say probably an eight or nine year old girl um, standing behind that tree and kind of peering, watching all of the kind of festivities where you guys are at. And Kawan says, um, uh, that girl's mother is the one who was killed. And she um, the village, of course, is taking care of her, but she hates all humans because of this. Um, so your friends um, should, you know, exercise care around her. Um, I guess I can't ask questions right now because I'm not in this conversation. Are you nearby? <laughs> I could I could eavesdrop <laughs> and insert myself. I guess I was going to call you over um, anyway. Yeah, we could say that if you want to be part of the community, right. at some point you could have entered into it. You yeah, know, by, let's say it's by um, by t by the tiny clock. It's the sixth bowl of mead. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> All right. Does um, uh, yeah, Pybiki introduces herself and uh, and says hi. And um, does this elf have a have a bow visible? Um. Not, not on her. No. Okay. She's dressed. She's the only girl. Curious. Dressed simply, and she has like a knife at her belt. But that's that's about it right now. Yeah. 
I was just curious about that arrow that we found, the elven oh, arrow right, out right, in the right. wilderness. Um, uh, so the, um, the, the one who was killed um, in an altercation was, was helping to build the, the town, the, uh, the word giver's hall. No, um, uh, Ar Arjuni is the uh, the woman, the, the mother of this child that you see out by the tree. Arjuni was her mother, and her mother, um, in 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 anger, um, tried to drag one of the construction workers away from the um, in, a, oh. in a fury, and then in the course of the scuffle that followed, she was struck and killed. Yeah. Yeah, the were the workers um, Venati or did, were they corking? Uh, they were corking. The um, they had uh, two. They are at the camp as well. There's um, three corking workers at the camp, along with Elisa and her word keepers. Were there, were there more um, word keepers here when they claimed the village? Do you know? Did they there bring were, a small army, or did there were four of them? Oh, yeah. I, um, as far as I can tell, or Kwan says that Admaya thought that if they had tried to like somehow physically defend themselves, that the cost would have been too great. So she's hoping to work out, she was hoping to work out some kind of a peaceful deal. Like the way that the Corcane put it, it was like, you will be under our protection. You know, of course the village hasn't needed anybody's protection, but that was the, that was how it was presented to them. And if you just go along with what we say, um, you'll, you'll be fine, you'll prosper. Our presence won't, you know, it'll, it'll actually improve your village's fortunes to have us here. And then Kuan says, lately there have been traders coming from the west, the Uzbeer, who have not ventured to this side of the mountains in many, many years, but lately they have been coming. And I believe that the Korkin know of this, and they are thinking that one day salt wall will be a um, trading post where the corcane can trade with the ooze bear. The traders who are coming by sea? No, they are coming overland through the mountains. Hmm. And I'm sure some kind of increase, I mean, to the far north, um, my understanding is that the corcane are are seafarers, but they have not made it down this part of the coast. Um, to be honest, I don't have a clear sense of how this is. This is the elf's perspective. I, I don't have a clear sense of how this body of water um, reaches around to to that body of water. But it may be that they hope to bring their ships down here as well at some point. But to my knowledge, no corking sail has ever crossed the bay. Hmm. We should find out if the Venati have any maps that will show us how far this ocean goes or how far they've traveled along this land. Uh, I had a I had a game quest or uh, outside of this context question. What is the name of the land that we all live in? <laughs> I guess we. Is there, <laughs> I think it's just. It's, is it's, there one? It's the land in whatever language you speak. It depends on where you're. Uh, mm. I don't oh, okay. have an I don't have a name for yeah. it because it's kind of broken up into all these. There's like no one. Um, 
there's a number of different kind of neighboring uh, political uh, bodies, I guess I would say. Yeah. But I mean, right, if you want to say we live in, what would you say? Yeah. If we say, well, there's the, um, there's Rayuna, but then there's the cult. There's the culture of the people that um, that lived in that area, at least. Yep. Right. What were they called? I don't know if I wrote that down. Wait, the people that were not Rayunan? No, the people that were um, not Corkeen, but the folks that kind of oh. are from that area. Well, there's the grasslanders, right? The grasslanders. Yeah, Rayona is kind of its own little pocket, and then the grasslanders were um, to the northeast in the northeast lowlands. Yeah. Okay. And um, the 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 word giver of Rayona is a grasslander. A collaborator. Okay. All right. And then we're, I guess we'd be like the, the forest people or something. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, let's, yeah. The mother would, right? Wasn't that the uh, forest mm -hmm. you guys lived in? Yeah. Yeah. In the center of the world. <laughs> yes, exactly. The mother tree. So we'll say that you're, um, Okay, forest people is Metsa Imizit. Metsa Imizit. Metsa Imizit. Let's say the Metsa. That's that's your people. Yeah. Metsa. Okay. So we are, you would say, we are Metsa. And um, Moirin and this Kuan elf come from a similar part of the the land i i suppose since they can speak a similar language there's different right they, there's different sort of pockets of elf of um in different parts of the world kind of little isolated pockets of the elves who um at one point may have been more widespread and maybe more of a unified culture at some point but um who knows when they got broken up. So they're different, almost like clan groups, right? Um, uh, and Weirin and Kwan are not from the same um, geographic region, but they do, have, they do share enough of a language to be able to communicate in Elvish to each other, yeah. Right. And Moirin, you, you came from the Northwest of, uh, Rayuna, is that right? I'm trying to remember. Uh, yes, that I uh, most recently traveled from there, yes. Is that where your homeland is? Um, it Out of was, ways. Yeah, it was definitely on the west. Uh, okay. Maybe if I, let me see if I can, uh, maybe a little bit of a map would help. I have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, um, there's Rain in the middle there. And so, uh, Muirin came from up here, this general mm -hmm. area, right? Yes. And you guys um, traveled down the river somewhere around here you got the waterfall and that actually that word's not accurate in terms of it you traveled some fair distance after that and now you know salt wall is down in this area uh, and, and the bay is facing south because they're if, saying if you if you can even keep your orientation north south east west i don't know how you like how ray unions actually orient themselves like in terms of the sun and whatnot but the bay would basically go out this way. Oh, okay, because they were talking about uh, 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 traders from the west. Right, the traders were overland. 
got it, got it, got it, got it. Got it. The traders, um, yeah, would have banned from somewhere in that direction. I know it's a lot of stuff to keep track of, right? Okay. Um, so, and this over here is, you have not even heard this word before, but when Kawan says the Uzber or Uzber, um, uh, she's ref referring to some land over in this direction. And that recently traders from Uzber um, have been coming to Saltwall for small exchanges of, of goods. Oh, yeah. And there's clearly, there's a, the road that leads out of town to the east is the one that the Corsin came in. So you guys came basically across the wilderness. There was no road from the direction that you came from. But there is a road that runs east out of town, and that's where the Corsin came from. And that's where this, the, the, the Venati that they arrested and took away, that's the direction that they were taken. Yeah, makes sense. Um, can I ask Kuan, has, have you ever heard of a mountain is, um, uh, in your travels called the, the Misty Tooth? I have heard a story, um, or or two, yes, about this this place. Uh, my understanding is that it is towards Uzbek. I don't know where, um, but the stories are not good stories. But why? Ah. Uh, there was a tale of an ancient Uzbek city built on a, a mountain that they called the Tooth. And these people who built this city uh, worshipped a figure of disruption. And their devotion was so great that this figure's power was released and changed the landscape around them. And there is a story of people strangled in their sleep by uh, figures that one could not lay a hand on by figures of mist. And the city, the, the, the settlement fell because this force was loosed upon it. But let's talk of happier things. And she starts to sing along. <laughs> She starts to sing along to one of the folk songs that they're singing. I love this one. <laughs> this uh, is a different I, kind of story. <laughs> this is a story of a people who sailed across the ocean itself to reach this place of white cliffs. Um, I'm starting to get uh, toasted. Uh, <laughs> or actually, I mean, I don't have the strongest, su have strongest stuff as I might be totally toasted, but I've been, I haven't been a part of this conversation. Um, <laughs> And I, um, I'm now trying to persuade Durbin, tell them the story, Derby, tell them about the giant. <laughs> yeah. And his eyes light up. Tell them about the giant, Derby. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sort of, he sort of, uh, he says, no, no, he whispers to somebody and somebody stands up and like claps their hands and the music stops. Um, at this point, the sun is starting to go down. So there's like, you know, it's the magic hour and there's like uh, golden light falling across the courtyard. Um, it's springtime and there's like on the wall of the courtyard, there's like these little vine flowers that are uh, kind of catching the light. Um, and uh, there's the smell of roast goat in the air. <laughs> And um, Durbin uh, 
You and you guys have never seen him. You've known him a short time, but you've never seen him so kind of animated, right? He's like lighting up around his people, and it's um, and uh, and he proceeds to tell them in Venati. So I guess Mirren and um, Paiviki can pick up of some of what he says, but like uh, he talks about like how you climb down the cl- you know, climbing down the cliff, and then he points at Tapias and talks about how Tapias fell, and everybody goes, oh! Like, <laughs> there's a kid um, sitting over on the wall behind Tapias, um, and the kid sort of reaches forward and puts his hand on Tapias' shoulder. Um, and he's, you can tell he's describing how he went through the mist, and he makes the noise, and everybody goes, oh! Um, and he, yeah, he, so he recounts the whole tale about how you, um, and then you hear people saying Bajnik, Bajnik, um, mentioning the name of the of the daring thief who uh, who took who stole something from uh, from the from the River King. And uh, oh yeah, and then they say uh, uh, somebody picks up a, a horn and blows it. <laughs> And then you see uh, several figures kind of moving across the village outside of where you are, outside of the courtyard. Um, trying to get to... Oh, I'm still in... <laughs> That's not working. <laughs> Can I just clear? It? There we go. Poink. Okay. <laughs> that. Um, and so figures move from the gathering place towards the um, the big statue. And he says, "Come, my friends, come!" And everybody gets up and um, moves out of the courtyard, and they're kind of ushering you along. Little people are kind of pushing Paiviki out. Um, uh, Durbin is uh, helped up onto some crutches. I guess is Taimi able to? Is Taimi mobile? <laughs> yeah, I mean it yeah, hasn't okay. been that long. Okay. That, that'd be like dangerous drunk. <laughs> okay, all right. So maybe you're a little woozy on your feet. And uh, everybody kind of moves over to where the statue is, and um, Atmaya, the leader, is there, and um, there's already a fire going, and um two super agile um kids like i guess it, for Venati they'd probably be teenagers um with these big bundles they've got this these huge bundles of um sticks on their back like bundled onto their back and these um like these leather straps they scramble up the statue like like little monkeys they just kind of like climb up the statue and they climb up into the bowl up top and unload their um, their bundles up there. Um, and one of them, at the edge of the bowl facing, um, that you can see from down below, there's like a kind of, you notice that there's a, some kind of triangular, like a tripod kind of on the edge of the bowl. And one of them hefts something up out of the bowl and sets it on this tripod. Um, so looking up at the statue, big bowl, there's some kind of maybe a couple foot high structure with like this large, looks like a giant crystal set on this um, tripod. Um, and Jer- Durbin says, that is the treasure of Bajnik. And he points up at this, um, that he took from under the river king's nose. <laughs> And everybody's kind of like, you know, they start singing a song about Bajnik, and then the kids up there ignite the um, ignite the uh, the the wood that they brought up there. And Durbin says, um, uh, "With this fire, all of the fisher, all of the fishers know now to come home." And he points down off the cliff, and um, when you look down at the bay, you see the um, the triangular sails of all of the fishing boats starting to come back in towards the shore as the as the beacon burns. That's what I'm talking about. 
See, I told you, Bajanik brought this back. It's amazing. That's what I'm, that's what I'm talking but about. You said it was like a, you said it was like a crystal? Like an irregular, yeah, it's like an irregularly shaped. Um, it, so when, it, when they light the fire, the, the crystal almost kind of, the reflection, the internal reflection of the crystal makes it seem to glow on its own because um, of the way it catches the firelight. Mm -hmm. um, so there's this big fire blazing behind it. And from down at your perspective, the crystal, because you can see the sky against it a little bit, it almost seems to sort of flicker with its own orange light. But it's about the size of, um, you know, it's about, it's about a foot and a half high by a foot wide. Oh, wow. And it's like a rough, you know, it's an uncut, um, it appears to have been polished because you can, it seems trans, translucent or transparent, but um, yeah, it's a giant crystal. Maybe it's a giant gemstone. And it's, kind of to the, it's kind of to the side of the pyre. It's like on the near side in the middle and the pyre is on the far side of the, of the bowl up there. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Cool. <laughs> I bet that's what that thing was looking for in the river. It was poking around the stones. It's looking for more of those crystals. It's got a whole cave full of them. <laughs> Why did Bajnik only take one? Look at the thing. It's huge. Maybe they're heavy. <laughs> that it weighs a ton. Yeah. With the three of us, we could take three. Is this just the three of you talking? Is is this like a private? Yeah. Conversation? Okay. Yeah. Like, we need to figure out and make a plan so that we can get we that we can get back there and get those crystals. Yeah, I, I want to know what's on the what's uh, the the sh um, shell. What's on the shell? I want to know about that. Well, yeah. And what do you, what do you guys uh what do you guys talk to the elf about? She know anything about the? Uh, are there any word keepers here? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? What? Listen. Which one? Which one? But listen, there are. But she's heard about. She's heard of the. Um, the tooth. The tooth. Remember uh, the uh, the misty tooth. The, the one that we we we. Uh, uh, that's on the scroll, the misty tooth. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah, that yeah. the sorcerer wanted to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he wanted to go there. It's left of here. Oh yeah. There's probably treasure there too. Yeah, I don't know what. What was he looking for? It says, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it says, Uncle Shevlik, so sloppy, never liked me. The orb of mists is rightfully mine. Yeah, the orb of mists. We can find that there, I bet. Yeah. yeah. So wait, where... Where's the word giver? He's over there. I just kind of point to that side of town. She's out in the camp. And we explain the whole thing to yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Taimi and give her the whole story. She she makes the she pantomimes the spitting motion, but she doesn't spit on the ground like Yeah, I'm sure they take someone away to the capital, probably dead or in a, rotting in a cell. It's what they do. Can't believe they came in here and muscled their way to in protection. Um, you guys notice that Kawan and Anika are hitting it off. Um, they're both just like, they're dancing by the fire and having a good old time. Right. I wonder if uh, Quan would want to join us <laughs> once we 
decide what to do. Hmm. Oh, you give them a, uh, I think you give them the tree. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was a tree, um, you got a branch or something? Is, um, is Akmaya there? Yes, yes, Akmaya is there. Okay. Um, so, uh, Paiviki waits for a kind of like a lull in the music or like a, um, uh, kind of like a break in the song or when one, one dance finishes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then she gets up and um, with uh, Durbin's help, tries to get everybody's attention. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so there's a and, Yeah. And then in her best Venati, she says to the people, we come from Rayuna, five days to the north. We um, have come to bring home uh, your friend, our friend Durbin, who was captured by a terrible sorcerer. And uh, and then she tells a story of the beast who was coming after our town and the sorcerer who had attacked us and the um, um, that we had conquered the beast and uh, or d destroyed the sorcerer and freed um, Durbin and brought him home again and uh, then she goes on to say um, and um, we come as friends to, um, to, to create, a uh, friendship between our, our town and your town and our people and your people. And, um, uh, she gets out this tree and says, you know, we are the, uh, the, what are we? We are the Metza for the people of the forest. And we, she tells them about the tree of the mother tree. Um, we have no, we have no ocean, but we have the forest and all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and here we have um, a, a child of the mother tree we bring to you to plant in your village. And so she gets up the tree and brings the tree you know, for you, the ocean, for us, the tree. Wow. Um, has all of the, um, is where we come from. Wow. So she, then she comes and hands it over to the Ak Akmaya. Yeah, are you, would you say you're trying to sort of, this is an act of goodwill, obviously. Um, are you trying to, kind of convince them that you have all the best intentions? Um, uh, yes. <laughs> I think so. That would, I mean, I be, think... that would be the convincing. Yeah. Yeah, just to be, um, to have friendship. And, yeah. um, and I, I also point out that Although we all look different um, in our town, there are people who come from many lands, and um, and we're all friends there. Yep. Um, I see. I see. Uh, yeah, got it. And you look more like Corcane than the rest of your traveling companions as well. Yeah, I look like a, the people who just came and and yep. fucked up their village. Yep. So <laughs> great. And um, then Moiran, Moiran looks kind of different. Yeah. Um, she looks like their elven friend. So uh, I think this is this is a, a an uh excellent diplomatic overture. Um 
uh, and you're going to make a negotiate role to kind of convince them of your good intentions. Um, and I think that's going to be with charisma. Okay. I'm making a roll, y'all. Yeah, plus two. Is that what's that? Because you're you have you have like sixteen charisma. Plus, right? I have sixteen charisma. Yeah. Um, and so with my roll plus two, yeah. um, that makes five. <laughs> so. Um, okay. Wow. Um, okay. Okay. If I burned a luck, that would, that would bring it up to six, so that wouldn't really do any good. No. 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 Can I get help from Durbin? Um. No. Oh. Huh. Yeah. No. Durbin is an NPC who could totally help you because he is totally on your side. So the question is whether you want to burn a point of luck to bump it up to a seven. Um, I would in this case, if that, um, if I, if it would make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would make a difference. I, I have an idea of what would happen on a, um, on a six or less, but, um, either way, it's up to you. <laughs> if you get, yeah, if you I'm go for the it. six or less, you do get to mark charisma, but, uh, I'm not going to, you, know. you Jason. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to, um, yeah, it's clearly no, what I'm, I'm burning luck. Okay, great. Then, uh, yeah, so you actually give that whole amazing speech, and there's a kind of a, as you're talking, a kind of hush has fallen across the whole thing, and everybody's kind of staring at you. And there's, after you finish, there's like a, everything is quiet. You can hear the crackling of the, of the pyre up above. There's a, like sparks are kind of, uh, falling down um, and then uh, there's just this slightly uncomfortable too long of an uncomfortable pause and then Durbin like who's standing next to you like um, you know shouts something at them like no 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 and they all go Rah! Um, and it's like a little a little a little nudge over the edge that they needed to like um, to break the tension of you standing up there talking uh They'll do it, but only if you concede something meaningful in return. So we don't have to get into that right now, but you, uh, it was a, it was a um, you get the sense that it was uh, an effective overture, um, but they're not buying it 100%. And that more would have to be done to really create trust with them because of this recent um, painful thing that occurred um, it's going to take a while for them to really trust you H however you do feel that Admaya um, the leader is is uh, kind of a little more kind of worldly wise and a little more uh, understanding of the differences between peoples and uh, seems to take your word you know as you've expressed it like Admaya, Admaya seems a little more um, on board with what you've but convincing the village as a whole will take more okay uh, so she grace graciously accepts the um the sapling is that what it was or like a yeah the, i think yeah. so yeah so she uh, uh, graciously accepts that after after durbin kind of uh, gives his little encouraging shout um and then, you know, she says, like, you know, carry on with the the singing and the dancing. And uh, uh, thanks you personally. So that, you know, the focus shifts away from you. And um, at Maya um, takes a moment to thank Paiviki and to look at, you know, to acknowledge Taimi and, um, and Weirin as well. Um, to thank you personally for uh, the gift and for bringing Durbin back. Uh, and I guess standing with you to one side of the statue near the cliff side um, asks what your intentions are in terms of staying in Solwall. Um, 
and um, I would bring um, Taimi and um, Moiran over to meet with her and introduce them a little bit more. Um, and I say to them, she asks us what our intentions are, how long we want to stay in salt wall. Well, um, uh, Topias needs to regain his strength at the very least. Yeah. I wouldn't want to make any sort of great journey back to Reuna or elsewhere without him being on better footing. Yeah. We've mentioned that to her, our friend who's got a broken leg that need, needs to heal. Yes. Um, and uh, then I think just dropping some um, uh, sort of like Venati um, uh, cultural references and 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 talking about um, you know wanting to learn about the Venati and uh, you know after meeting Durbin wanting to know the people better so that we can come back to Rayuna and tell them all about him and stuff like that um, and I'm you know just mentioning the the little history that I learned from reading those books. Um, probably I would know more about the Venati than the average person who comes along who hadn't met them before since I read those. Yeah, for sure. And you're trying to sort of casually work it in the conversation or <laughs> are you framing as well, like... Just, um, Sort of saying like, uh, you know, we're interested in learning about the Venati so that, um, you know, we can come back home and tell them all about uh, you and that we, we, that we had learned about you from, um, from Durban and from um, stories that we'd read and that we wanted to meet, meet you in person. Uh, and this is a, a great honor and adventure for us. So, I believe you, but I think perhaps it would have been better if no one learned of the Venati, given what has happened here recently. I understand. Uh, we are found now, and we cannot go back. So, to be known is something we must embrace. We have had many years of prosperity here, with only limited interaction with your kind. But now, now they they sit amongst us, and she gestures towards the the A-frame structure. Are we uh, uh, in, in a, in a non-eavesdropping location? Yeah, you're standing next to the um, next to the statue on the cliffside. So you're like, oh, wrong place. Wait, wait. There we go. Um, you're standing like right in here. One of the reasons why we're here. And one of the reasons why we're even here with Durbin is because of those people. The monster was taking some of our friends and villagers and we asked the word keeper for help. That's like the one thing they're supposed to do, right? And he didn't do it. We had to go ourselves and face the monster and rescue our friends. And we found Derby you know, down there and sourced in some, in some spell. The, the word giver is, is evil. They can't be trusted. Once that building is built, they will move in 
And then that will be that. Whatever they promise you, they can't deliver it. I believe that Alisa, the word giver who they have sent, I believe that she is, uh, is honorable. I have spoken with her closely. She did not want this to happen. It was an accident. But the anger of my people, of course, cannot be assuaged by this idea. What do you know of these word givers? Who, what will happen next? They, Uh, I guess like John should urge the player doesn't know how to confidently answer that. Like what is kind of the setup? Like they distribute law and judgment on like criminal charges and stuff in conjunction with the local constable. Um, but is there also like a taxes flowing out situation? Um, yeah. <clears throat> in okay. your guys's case, it's like uh, a monthly, you have to basically, you know, you have to send uh, resources um, with a um, overland by wagon to the capital. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so the word giver's job is to kind of enforce that. Let's, in a way, their sort of primary law enforcement is to make sure that you pay your taxes. Um, and the word keepers are there to, to enforce that. And then in theory, on top of that, they're also supposed to um, adjudicate any other kind of issues that arise in the community and um, the idea being that they have such a powerful presence that they can you know that they're you know the word will be kept like you guys will follow the law because if you don't you know we 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 have the power the physical power <coughs> so that hasn't happened here yet they haven't um they've kind of come in with the claim that they've which you've heard which is that they will um protect uh salt wall from any harm um, is um, is there a par parallel that we can draw between their experience and our experience? Like, I don't know if we, like what age we were, like how long ago it was that El Mary set up shop in Reuna, but like, was it the same sort of thing where like El Mary was instated and they were like, oh, it's not going to be a big deal. There's not going to be any changes, but then like things kind of rolled out. You guys knew because they, they had already kind of done it in the grasslands and were you had communi communication with those people. So you had already known what was, when they did come, you knew what was gonna happen. And um, it was all very overt. These people, relatively speaking, have been somewhat isolated. Um, so when the Corkians show up, it was almost out of the blue. They may have heard rumors ahead of time from travelers. Uh, so it was a different, you guys knew about the idea that you would be taxed. And it does not look like at Maya and her people are aware of that part yet. They, yeah. have not, they have not been asked to sacrifice anything yet. Yeah. Just as the beast came to our village and demanded goods and wine and, and valuables, and eventually stole our beloved friends and uh, loved ones from us, so too do the, the word givers demand tithing and tribute to be sent to their wretched capital taxes, resources by the wagon full are sent out. And what do we get in return? We got nothing. In our time of need, we were ignored. Aid was sent at so long a delay that if we had not acted, our friends would have been dead. Is that protection? It is what I feared. But what can we do? What did you do? Uh, timey looks really uh, crestfallen. We ran. <laughs> we left. We left to seek help. We hoped that there would be people that could strengthen our community and help us push back against the war givers. You know, I've not seen the capital. I've not seen 
the full form of their power. But I feel like we could drive them away. Drive them away? Off of our, off of our home? Into yeah. The, into the sea? Yeah, push them into the sea. <laughs> They're flesh and blood. She um, turns towards the, the cliff and um, kicks a rock um, off into the into space. What stopped us in Rayuna was we were afraid for our friends. We didn't know what would happen even if we were able to chase the word keepers away if uh, if they would just come back. But yes. and I, I um, you see that that is the position that I am in. The, but also the people of Rayuna were traumatized and beaten down by months of dealing with a marauding beast. Mm. From what I've seen, you guys can fucking drink. <laughs> <laughs> I see the strength. I, I, I see the glint of your spears and the and the, the the shiny polish of your knife. You're you're warriors. Those aren't aren't neglected weapons. <laughs> um. Are you are you does Tammy trying to convince at my uh to do something um, or just kind of building a building a i'm i'm building the i'm building the case the body, I'm, yeah, yeah, her, okay. I'm not convincing her to action in this particular millisecond but right. i am trying to convince her that like her people are are strong and yeah they have armor yeah they have crossbows you know but they are just flesh and blood you know, i think that she has an opportunity here that we didn't have you know mm. we we let them sink their claws in. You know, we got trapped in, in the whatever like snare is used in this world, you know, where you pull tighter, the more you pull, the tighter it gets, you know, and, and we, we didn't get out while it was still loose. We have the advantage of our goats. They have no mounts of any kind. There's no way that they could that face one of our goats one of our goat knights in, um, sorry, goat knights, goat riders, not knights. They don't. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, you. So you've gotten a little bit of it. You see, you see the gears turning. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. If we could just lay claim to those bolt throwing things, those weapons that they carry. <laughs> When she says that, I kind of, I kind of lean over to Moirin and say, "I wonder if there's a way we could disarm them with um, poison." <laughs> <laughs> Did someone say? <laughs> hmm. Invite him to the party. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, Arwen's making it. That's okay. Um, if, <laughs> if we were able to take care of these uh, corcanes ourselves, then the perhaps the um, the salt wall. The people of Saltwall would not have to take the responsibility for whatever happens to them. If you dealt with them, if the three of you, I was. Um, <laughs> um, I was kind of saying that like this uh -huh. to. Um, oh, these, oh, oh, okay. These, okay. Just like, yeah. Got it. Just as like an aside. Um, but, um, yeah, 
No. Hmm. They don't, at this point, know that we're here. That's right. They have not set foot in the village. This may be a, you may be able to hear that it's a particularly boisterous evening um, from their camp, but they don't know why. Maybe it's just like a local yeah. religious celebration or something, but yeah, that's true. They don't know right. you're here. Um, so uh, I guess the party's gonna go on. Uh, I'm, I'm muted, sorry. I was. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, were you talking? I wanted, I wanted to say like, what you know, one of the most wicked that we've dealt with was not even a Colkeen. Uh, uh, it was one of our own. Um, is there anybody in your village that is uh, uh, sympathetic or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Timey actually says that. Um, uh, 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 uh. Oh gosh, now John doesn't know. <laughs> Um, you know, speaking up on their behalf. Advocating um, for? Thank you. Jesus yeah. Christ. Advocating. <laughs> um, uh, my people are, are of, of, of one mind. Okay. Um, no one, uh, once, once Arjuni was, was killed, um, Mukata carry her to the horizon. Uh, there is nothing that the Kirkin could do to, to sway us, any one of us. You're certain of that? To the last. All right, I believe her. Um, yeah, the, then, then I think there's a good chance, chance that they don't know we're here. Oh, you mean you, you, if it, no one has informed them yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I, I would be afraid that like there'd be some weasel who would be like eh, there's outsiders if i give my word tonight um then no one will speak of your presence um sounds like we could do this and what i i kind of come in close to the two of you and say, um, should we do this here, what we couldn't do in our own village and uh, chase the Corkeen away? Um, this is a, a, a I, I, this is like a very strong defensible, village and people uh and i think that we have a chance to nip this in the in the bud i think actually perhaps it's better if they um take part in it because then they would um not feel that the court king were so invincible I mean, with the riders that they have, those those ferocious mounts. Uh, I mean, we could easily there would be a, there would be a loss, but we could we could overtake them, overrun them. What? Maybe we could um, we should s sneak into their camp and um, try to get an advantage and then have the riders come. What do you say, Moirin? <laughs> oh, I agree. Um, we've, we must make sure that um, the Venati uh, are 100% sure of this decision because the rebellion relies on their forces keeping the Corkeen away. And this yeah, is their no. town. Um, what, what kind of um, tricks can we play 
on this camp. Do you have anything in mind? Well, so we know that there's three. Three um, word keepers and one word giver. <clears throat> I think so. And some more. Oh, there's some more. More workers. Three workers. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah, so. Oh, sorry, let me amend that. I see here I got my got it wrong according to my notes. There's three word keepers, three workers. Um, Alisa, the word giver. And uh, Alisa has uh, an attendant named Ilmata. So that's a total of, you know, three heavily armed, uh, and you know you would assume Eliza might be able to hold her own. Um, so three heavily armed, a leader, and four people who may not be heavily armed. So seven people total. I see. I count eight. Yeah, I count eight too. Three plus three plus. Oh yeah. Sorry. Yes. 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 Two. Yes. I mean, I'll take yeah. seven. <laughs> no, it's eight. <laughs> <laughs> so if we have the three of us plus um, four uh, four goat riders and um, and any other villagers who can help. Well, I think Anika would be down for some. In fact, oh, yeah. any time he knows that Anika would, would just be like, would jump at the chance to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I, I want to. Right. Yeah, I want to be the one to tell her. I want to. I want to make a big to do about it. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What kind of um, what kind of uh, poisons do you have uh, that might be useful? at this point um i believe i have um that fatal sleeping one that we gave Iselmat. um <clears throat> but that's not enough for everybody um, how, many, how many uses of that do you have do you have that noted uh i have it says four is that like no that's probably not right I probably don't have four. Because um, you had to, you gave some to him, right? To to the uh, Didn't you make some more? Yeah, didn't you make new poison? Your current. Oh, I saw it. Yeah, I made new poison, and then um, I didn't mark how much there was. But then I have a second one where I have two uses of lock finger, which is a paralysis. Did you actually succeed in making that, or was that your progress towards making it? <laughs> <laughs> I drew two circles. Yeah. Okay, we'll say you got two uses of that. Um, I'm pretty sure I made it because of my um, crafting ability, if I had the supplies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It might have just taken more time, but we'll, yeah, well, you'll have, well, you have two uses of that for sure. Okay. The lock finger, which is a per paralyzing agent, right? Yes, um, extremities actually. Yep. So, yep. like a person. Yep. Got it. And that'd be kind of, that would kind of be mm -hmm. perfect for this, right? Like, how how is it is it administered orally? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did we talk about what the final form of it was? We didn't. Okay. Um, then this is what we're gonna do. What would be ideal for you? <laughs> like, oh. what would be the ideal way for you to administer this? Like, ideally, I guess it would just be like a... Like, would it be a powder you could mix in there? A spray. A spray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 a topical. Yeah. A, a, a topical okay. poison. A topical numbing agent that would just... Uh... Well, that, yeah, I mean, this is not that ideal, I guess, if you're trying to, like, sneak someone sneak that to someone. How fast um, acting is it? Oh. 
uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Oh. <laughs> Is that too short or too well, long? You just got to get it into them before, you know, yeah, in, in advance I mean, of when you would take whatever action against them. Yeah, that's right. not like dipping, dipping blade in poison. Right. <laughs> You'd have to be yeah. sword fighting right. for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. You, 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 you get them, and then you, you run away. <laughs> That's what poison darts are for. You just um, shoot them and then come back later. Oh, darts. Um, <laughs> That'd be cool. What about, what about um, some sort of a, uh, a sneaking into their camp and um, uh, sabotaging their crossbows or something like that some right. kind of um what about isomat bane the other poison um i do have that, that i was, think that was, you you have some right yeah so um is it not part of my um standard uh it's not standard to indicate how much you make when you say that you're crafting poison? Um, um, usually it's based around uh, a dose, one, one use. Mm. Okay, um, so I probably only have one, right? If I spent. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I can go back and review this later. We can go back and look sure. at the tape. <laughs> um, sure, we yeah. have it on record so I can yeah. do that research. So we don't have to figure all that out right now. Under the, uh, the poison. Yeah. yeah. John, go ahead. Under under the poison on the on the on the rule sheet, it does say one dose. Okay. Okay. That's probably what I have. So if we could sneak into their camp and and put a dose of those poisons into their food. Um that and then wait. Sleepy. Um, yeah, sleepy and or paralyzed, <laughs> depending on what they eat. What, where are they? Um, where are they getting their water and food from? Uh, there's a. So I guess my question at this point is: Is this all conversation happening on the cliffside here by the party, or would it be? Like, <laughs> would it be like the next day after you guys wake up? Uh, um, that um, probably that probably would be wise. Because Taimi may not be in full, <laughs> you yeah. know. I mean, you're not falling off a cliff, but like, <laughs> uh, we'll see about that. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> there she goes. I think we need to um, we need to make camp and um, have uh, um, make sure that um, the, um, Akmaya yeah. lets everybody know that we're not here. Yeah, okay. Um, and um, <clears throat> to and and to uh, we need to have a town maybe we need to have a town meeting and get everybody on the same page. Well, I guess the thing um, what you have to do is the first thing you have to do is convince Akmaya to do this. Because she's been very interested in everything that you're saying. Yeah. But there's, there's, she, as you can imagine, she's weighing a lot. Um, mm -hmm. and these are her people. Yeah. And she already made this decision to like to protect right. them. And now we're talking about taking potentially costly action. So you are going to have to make a role to convince her. Um, that doesn't have to be tonight. I think that what will happen is we'll cut to the next morning. Uh, she's basically let you. Yeah camp um to keep your presence secret you're basically sleeping on the floor inside her house so her common room you guys are all kind of crashed out in there um including uh, you know anika and um, topias is actually being kept in a different house where somebody's taking care of him um so we'll just say you spend the night no problem you all get restful sleep and you're fed, so you don't have to mark rations or anything like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so then in the morning, um, you can continue to have your conversation and perhaps try to convince um, 
at Maya that this is the oh. right plan. Uh, is there any, will they provide us lodging? Yeah. Uh, is there any chance that lodging could be like down the cliff? I just, I want to minimize the chance that uh, Elisa could come in and just happen to see us wandering around. Yeah, sure. Great. Yeah, that's a great idea. So the first night you'll spend it at Maya's house, um, which is up on the level, but then the next day she can take you down or send you, lead you with a guide down the cliff to a more out of the way place. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, let's go crash out and and discuss this farther further. Uh okay, so we pa oh, oh yeah, so we passed out at um at Maya's house and now yeah. we're awake and sober. Yeah, and I guess before you get into heavy planning or trouble, you know, trying to figure out what to do, if you're you need to get on Maya on board, like you need to make the final uh, lobby for that. Mm -hmm. If you want the resources of the village to be part of this plan. Um, I know that we've got to talk about this. I know this is very important, but I, I can't, I can't stay away any, any longer. I, I gotta see, I gotta get, we're, we're so close to that big water. I gotta see it. <laughs> uh, Admaya laughs and says, um, Yes, friend Taimi, yes. You have to see it. I have to see it. Come, come. Um, and she leads you all, you know, there's a little scout that kind of runs ahead to make sure the coast is clear. And then she leads you all um, uh, down uh, the long stair through, there's a little building here that you go down the back of that and down these stairs. Um, and this morning, yeah, it's like a glorious, beautiful morning and the sea is glittering. They're the seabirds are flying everywhere. Yeah. Um, super, you know, there's loud crashing waves and the calls of the gulls and you come down. And um, this time in the morning, it's, it's super active down here with all the, um, there's people mending nets and the, the, you know, there's, there's somebody building a boat and, you know, everybody like stands and puts down their tools when um, you come down the stairs. And then uh, and Maya reminds them that, you know, we're, they're supposed to keep it on the down low. So then they go back to their work. Um, and then you're led uh, out to this uh, top of the stair on this lower thing here to sort of survey the, the sea. And you see the little rocky islands out there in the water. Um, and the little, and I guess at this time of day, the, the fishing boats are starting to, they've, they've been going out, but you see there are these small, maybe four person, uh, little boats with um, triangular sails um, that are making their way out there. And you, way out in the water, you see some that are, um, you know, in position and uh, putting their nets in the water and whatnot. So maybe this is the place where you uh, make your overture. Um, yeah. And then is there a, a way for me to get close to it? To the water? Yeah. Yeah, you want to get right down to it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sure. get right down to it, yeah. You want to go down on the rocky, yeah, I guess you want to go down on one of these rocky beaches. Yeah. Okay, so you go all the way down across the the rocky beach right to the, the lapping waves. I've, I've, I've never seen waves before. That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, I cautiously touch it, uh, and then I um, I take off my greaves and my boots, and I, I like, go in with my feet. Uh, um. Do uh, and I, I scoop up some water and I sniff it and then immediately like drink it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not water. That's <laughs> and there's a there's like a, a laughter and you turn around and up on one of those upper walkways, there's like four or five Venati fisher folk who are looking down at you and kind of laughing as you spit the water out. In a jolly way, not in a mocking way. No, I know, I know. <laughs> um, I can only imagine what lives in there. <laughs> um, cool, well, I, uh, uh, I enjoy it for a little bit and I ask a couple 
a couple like I, I'm st- I'm just really trying to wrap my head around like the idea of it going on forever and it being the whole world. I'm really trying to like the the paradigm for me hasn't shifted yet. I like I still I keep on comparing it to like a bowl like or my hands and I hold it and then I open up my hands like mm. and it just it just goes out. <laughs> like so there's where's the other side? Like yeah. um and I do that for for a little while until uh, uh I either sense impatience from other people or I just get too wound up in like the enormity of it and then I I, I put my boots and greaves back on. Okay. Great. Um yeah so you guys Mickey comment- comes and says when we um, when we free the village, we should ask them to take us on a boat ride and um, go and see how far it is. Huh. That would be a journey. Is that my uh, privy to that comment? Yeah. If this if that happens, my friends, I will take you. And I am considered the greatest sailor among my people. Let's go. And she looks out over the water. <laughs> the wind blows through her hair. Um, all right. I guess let's go to whatever, uh, uh, you know, closed door conference room she had in mind. I think this is perfect. You're at the, you're at the shore of the water. This is like... You're where the water meets the land. Um, it's noisy. Nobody can hear you. Um, I guess maybe on the, you, you can be, probably came down to a beach on the far side of this thing, not the near side, because from up here, if somebody was standing up here, they could look down and see you. So you're probably over here, um, well out of sight. And um, there's nobody around. So except for the, some, um, some goats climbing cliffs and some water birds. So it's a perfectly fine place to, uh, unless there's somebody else you wanted here. Like, do you want Anika here? Or have you not sprung that news yet? No, not yet. Okay. So it's okay. just the three of you and we... Maya. I kind of look to the two of you and I say, let's, uh, let's see if she'll go for it. <laughs> Shall we? Yes. Um, can I assist, um, Moirin? Can I ask you to uh, to help me with my Venati? Perhaps you can uh, make things clearer than I. Of course. I noticed that. Uh, I have a bond with uh, Moirin, but I don't know if Moirin has a bond with me. I had one, but it um, was used, so those haven't been restored okay. yet, right? You need to you need to keep company to do that, yeah. And you can always, if I don't remind yeah. you, that's just something to keep in mind. Is you can say like, I'm going to have a little chat with Pravika or whatever. Um, but a straight up helping okay. will get you plus one regardless. Oh, okay. okay. Yep. Regardless right. of the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Straight up helping. Um, so I think I would say to uh, Akmaya, you know, we are the the best warriors of our village of Rayuna, and we conquered the beast and the sorcerer who came to our village, and we came to your town hoping to find a a free people Um, but uh, we have been so touched we we want to offer whatever we can to help uh, free you and we believe that we can do it Um, uh, and and Paibiki is like I'm a strong warrior and Taimi is the greatest archer in our land. And uh, uh, Moirin is the, the, uh, the quietest and the, the, the stealthiest of all people. Um, <laughs> so together, I think that uh, 
we may be able to with with the strength of the people of salt wall and the the mighty goat riders um we shall have victory <sighs> okay uh make a roll you have plus two for your charisma and plus one for Mirren helping. <clears throat> so Mirren's like clarifying some words here and there. Like, and Maya can also speak your language in a limited fashion. So there's a little bit of that back and forth. And um, Mirren is the kind of, you know, go between to help make sure you're both understanding each other. Go ahead. So I got a and plus okay. three. <laughs> Let's go. Bye. <clears throat> she sort of gives you a hard look. Um, sort of looks at each one of you. And uh, then there's a shout. There's a, um, it's Maya. And she looks up and you all turn around and on one of the ledges coming down the stairs um, is this person. Uh, uh, wearing a shawl that's kind of whipping in the wind, um, makes makes her way down the stairs towards you and says, uh, and looks around at all of you and says, um, is it happening? In Renati. And, and Maya looks at this person and says, um, yes. And she turns to you and says, we will do as you say. This is Lak, our Jadagura, the wisest among us, whose knowledge will be of great use in whatever lies ahead. Locke was in favor of doing what you have suggested. And I disagreed with her. And now you have convinced me that she was right. So we will do this. Um, I, uh, uh, I, I extend my hand to, to uh, lock. Is she is she like right there next to us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, she comes up to about your little above your waist. Uh, yeah, I extend my hand. Uh, she uh, uh, reaches out and grabs it, and she like um, just lets out a super. You know, she's missing a couple teeth, but like really kind of wide smile and a little uh, uh, chuckle, and she sort of happily pumps your hand. Yeah, I. I as she extends it, I, I do the thing where you like reach beyond and like grab the forearm. Like I want to give her like this sort of, oh, okay. okay, like that sort of shake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. He's like, ha ha! And uh, uh, shakes your hand, um, takes your forearm. Uh, 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 and, I, and I look to uh, Muirin to help me translate. Uh, your wisdom will be a, a great gift to us. Oh. And your your tallness a gift to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that 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 makes that makes Tiny smile real wide. <laughs> um, we, so we should we should organize some sort of um, planning meeting. You know, with maybe a representative of the riders, Locke, Atmaya. Anybody else? And obviously the three of us. Um, I guess, do you want, like, for the planning, I guess do you want to know, in terms of knowing who's on board, do you want um, Quan to be on board? Um, um, Moirin, Moirin, maybe you can ask, do you think that Quan would be a reliable ally? I think so, but I'm not sure her um, 
bravery in uh, battle. I was thinking the two of you could um, probably catch them unawares if, since you can see better than the rest of us in the dark, if we if we chose to come at night time. But yes, and we would catch them and surprise them, and possibly even um, be able to disarm a few. Yeah. Um, so in terms of like the meeting, so the plan, if you want to think about if Kwan is going to be a potential resource, then you would want to um, approach uh, her and talk to her about that. Otherwise, I think the, the, the meeting, as, as Taimi has suggested, um, the leader of the Goat Riders at Maya, Locke, and you guys would be the, the key figures. Do you want to do that, Moiran? Yes. And we'll wait for you. Uh, so Quan stays at the um, up at the common house, the gathering place where the initial party was the evening before. Um, so it's uh, easy for Moiran to find uh, her there. <clears throat> How do you how do you propose how do you uh, what's the proposal you make? Um, I'll just say uh, perhaps you sense that um, we that me and my friends don't just travel here um, by accident uh, and we. Um, Uh, we've we felt called to uh, work with this town to help um, help them drive off the the forces that you shared with us yesterday, um, and we like all the help we can. Um, would you be willing to? Uh, to save this town that you, um, to join in and save this town that you care so much about and uh, help us. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think um, it's not an instant, it's not an instant sell. There is, there's a little bit of potential reservation. So uh, it's another negotiate role to convince Quam. Okay. Uh, which is, you're either using intelligence to appeal to their sense of reason or charisma to, you know, charm them with your excellent speaking skills. Those are both zero. Okay, so they're both zero. So then, <laughs> um, I guess in this instance, I feel like there was some kind of camaraderie, so maybe I'm using charisma more so than intelligence at this point. Yeah, sure. Darn, zero. Uh, let me just see if, if there's anything in my um, playbook that uh, you know, I couldn't use cunning or anything. <laughs> yeah. You could use cunning <laughs> for anything related to poison. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, a poison that convinces people. Dang. All right. So just really plus zero. All right. Uh, so that's six. I mean, sorry. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Uh, okay. That's good enough. Um, oh. They'll do it, but only if you concede something meaningful in return. Kwan's concerns. I, a great injustice is being visited upon the Venati here. There's no doubt about that. But they are such good people. 
and they have lost so much already. You must promise me by the, oh, so uh, is Mwirin, so Mwirin's clan that Mwirin is from, what is the, uh, like are elves in your mind, uh, people of the forest or is each clan like of a different kind of environment or were elves originally all forest folk in the kind of traditional sense or, or in terms of like the kinds of places where they live and the things that they value. Do you have any thoughts about the elves? Um, I think at this point they occupy lots of different types of okay. um, um but i let's would you say that uh because of the fact that they are these kind of scattered clans that the kind of there's a strong connection between them even though they're scattered because of this same connection that you recognize with kwan when you saw her um right yeah right i mean just um since they're tends to be fewer and yeah. so Quan, what i'm just thinking of is like Quan is going to ask you to swear an oath on the thing valued most by elves which i'm going to suggest is is this kind of um connection that you have going back hundreds and hundreds of years to your original you know before you were before the elves were broken up <clears throat> there's some kind of unifying what's called the thread the, the thread um she says you must i will your cause is good and these people deserve better but they have lost so much that you must swear upon the thread our thread the thread we share um, that no harm will, no further harm will come to those who do not bear weapons, to the innocents among the village. And she, um, there's a thing that all of your people carry with you. It is this, um, uh, whatever, every person carries a different thing, but it's like a little, uh, uh, kind of wound up thing of thread of some kind. It can be like a twine or, you know, um, and Kwan pulls out a kind of um, uh, uh, golden woven thread um, uh, and winds one part of it around her uh, um, index finger and, you know, and holds out the other half of the, of the thread to you, asking you to, to, uh, bind yourself to her in this oath at all costs we will protect the um the villagers who do not enter into this directly you know she's basically saying anybody that's not gonna fight um uh you know we will protect them to the utmost of our ability yes um if we if um, my friends and I start this um, and start this engagement. We won't we won't um, leave until it's it, until it's finished, and uh, we won't um, allow this these people to fall to any harm. And you, Mirin, will do everything you can to protect the innocent. Uh, of course. <laughs> so you take the other part of the, you complete the, the oath. Okay. So she does that. And then what happens when you make that oath is you actually snip the thread and you keep the part that she, that you wound around your finger and she keeps her part to mark that you um, uh, have made that oath between. Okay. So Kwan's on board. Let's not fuck it up. <laughs> We've got an Avengers situation going on here. <laughs> a ragtag team. <laughs> uh, 
Paviki is chit chatting with Taimi and saying, "Do you um, do you think that being a hunter, if you go at night with Mirren, um, would you want to um, be in that group, and I would come with the villagers?" Or would uh, you want to come with me? Uh, I can move. I can move silently. Um, although I have not ever hunted. Hum uh, I guess it's not man before. I've never <laughs> hunted word givers before. <laughs> um, I, I'm well acquainted with, with sneaking upon prey. Um, and someone should be there to to lend help to Muirin. I think that if I come with the villagers and um, that perhaps uh, the two of you and maybe Quan could uh, come from uh be uh from a different place and surprise them yeah we could we could easily flank them and overtake them they positioned their camp in the open space um i mean we'll have to do like a recon scouting mission to to really see what it's about my main question is um if our goal is to chase them away and let them return to um, the capital and uh, tell them so that they know that Salt Wall is defended. No. Or do we try to capture everybody that we can? It, it, it looks as if it's, it's paining Taimi to say this and she's just, it's just dawning on her that like they're constructing a conspiracy to kill humanoids. Uh, I, th I think we have to kill them all. I don't think we can let them escape. I don't think that we should hold them capture. I think we should kill them. Are you guys having this in front of, is this just between Paiviki and Taimi? Is this yeah. Second? Okay, okay. Just right now. Yeah, got it. We're trying to get on the same page so that when we go to the meeting, we can, uh, we know what we're gonna say. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I think I think the anger that the um, Banati feel against the, the, the word giver and the high court will be hard to contain once they're in the throes of battle. Um, if we keep some captives though, we can maybe send somebody back and to convince them that uh, they need to send the, uh, the captured um, Venati back. A hostage negotiation. Hostage negotiation. I think the chance for that is very slim. I don't, I don't know, the, the life of one is not gonna weigh against the power. It, it, they wouldn't concede what power they had for one person. I don't think. Um, one, you know, one person could be used to gain, to glean more information about how the high court works and what their intentions are and, and what other areas they've spread to. But I don't think a captive would be valuable in, in retrieving uh, uh, the Venati that attacked the uh, word givers. Uh -huh. I would be very surprised if that person is still alive.
Um, I think it may be up to the um, to the villagers to decide. Ultimately, it's their yeah. town. Um, you know, we can only you know we can only put forth our recommendation, and I think the best chance of getting them to be as far away as long as possible with as little immediate retaliation is to, is to kill them all. Um, I think if we let one go, they'll come back tenfold. They'll make an example of them. But if there's no one to alert them to what transpired, the time between when we attack and when they are when they return and reinforced might be longer than if we just let one of them go we can tell the um we can tell them that we come from Uzbear <laughs> and <laughs> that we um um we don't we don't wish any uh that that salt wall belongs to Uzbear and that uh, we don't want any interlopers coming over. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have the cold. What does an Uzbear look like anyway? <laughs> yeah, I don't have the cold <laughs> to pull off that point. Um, also, I think, I think at this point we should wait till Mwerin gets back. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, circle white. Mir Mirin's back. Yep. Whoop. Yep. Okay. Uh, circle uh, up. Are we at the big meeting? Uh, no, because I, th I think I think Tyviki's right. I think like if we're going in there and we're recommending, I mean, they might, they they might be, you know, very single minded one way or another. But I think it's important for us to all talk about what we're going to recommend that they do. Um, okay. And I and so my recommendation is that. Like you, we kill them all except for someone that we can pump for information and, and then kill. <laughs> um, because I, I think that, I mean, I think th th there's no way that this will go unforgiven or unforgotten. You know, they, they will find out about it. They will send people. This will make life rougher for the uh, Venati. I don't think that there's a way that we can trick our way out of this. You know, I don't think that we can mislead them or scare them. Uh, their city is vast from what the stories are. Their, their armor and weapons are powerful. Um, and they would just, you know, they will come back with strength. And I think that the best chance that they have is to make that time for when they return as long as possible. And I think that killing them provides that for them. <clears throat> We can wait with our hostages and then send somebody later. Having hostages uh, gives us negotiating power, whereas killing them doesn't. It would have to be the it would have to be the word giver. What what say you? Um, uh, I worry that killing them is too um, too brutal for our um, personalities. Um, well, maybe it's smart to have a finality. I, um, I'm leaning more towards hostages, um, if only for the sake of um, sending a message about the kind of um people we are or this town is made of um it's possible that they'll view the the killings as um uh as um as a declaration of war um and we don't want that we just want um we just want this town to be free from um the occupying forces um and to defend the wall and also um, keep hostages alive as a threat can show the strengths, can be a display of strength and um, 
uh, military power. Um, um, go ahead. Is there any, um, did we, did, did uh, we come up with any ideas for how we could utilize poison or is it off the table right now? I don't think we decided the way it was administered, except that we thought that the most ideal way was um, some kind of, uh, the paralyzing one was um, topical. <clears throat> Yeah, so you can you can figure that out right now. Um, um, Liren could either establish you could just sort of say what you want it to be, and that would be um, an intelligence role, or you could just um, get lucky and see if it is if it if it is uh, has the application that you wish. Uh, I did like that dart idea, <laughs> and then um, and then a fast acting dart. Well, the fast acting part is part of the property of the poison. This is a, we never decided before how this poison would be applied. So if, if a dart would be ideal for you, like fast enough for it to, you know, go into somebody's skin and do its thing. Did we talk about a 20 to 30 minute time limit on the? We did. I threw that out there. Okay. That was part of the. About an hour ago. Yeah. So it is a slow acting paralyzing agent. Um, I was it, just being realistic. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> um i don't even remember you rolling for that so it must have been a convincing argument um uh so i guess to have it be you know something that you could put on that on a dart and that that would be enough to get into somebody's bloodstream and do its job yeah you could either establish try to establish that or get lucky your call Is establish um, intelligence? Yes. Do either of you have an opinion on how it should work? No. Mm -mm. I was just thinking about shaking hands with the word giver, though. And uh, if you're wearing gloves, you could poison them. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm Mm hmm okay yeah like a, uh, yeah like a, if it was topical meaning that um yeah um you are imagining a situation where they are poisoned um through like a uh, trickery rather than um uh, some event in the night well yeah if it takes 20 minutes it would probably um uh yeah, well, in the, an event in the night, you'd have to be able to do it and then get out. <laughs> that sounds kind of hard. Yeah, it's tough. If it takes 20 minutes for I mean, them to be something. paralyzed. But if you have a conversation, if you have a conversation and you shake someone's hand, yeah. I don't know. The disadvantage to the dart is that if somebody gets hit in the neck with a dart and they're like, ow, <laughs> what was that? And then they find it. And then they're like 20 minutes later, they start to get numb. They'll know. They'll probably guess that it was the dart that did it. But if you do it, I don't know if that would affect things. But if you did it by some other form of trickery, I mean, the shaking hand with the glove thing. Like, I guess then the ideal thing to be rolling for is that the the poison would not be detectable. Like, it wouldn't be um, like a wetness that the person would feel. It would be like some kind of powder right. that transfer that they would then get absorbed into them, and that's pretty right. powerful, right? So that would be. It could be the kind of thing where it's a powder where you could even like they could inhale it or you could put it in their food. It's very flexible that way. Yeah. Um, I was I was looking at the poison rules. So um, and they, they didn't. There's nothing listed about duration. There's like no. speed at which it takes to to enact itself, and then and then right, how long it lasts. That yeah. falls under the category of. Um, you know, it's isn't the wording like the effect that it has? Where's my effect? Minor, moderate, major, fatal. right? So that would figure into that, to that calculation. Oh, um, okay. So, so like uh, po poisons that do the same thing, if one lasts for an hour, versus 
a day, that would be the difference between like a minor and moderate potion, even if they the, the effects were the same, just the duration is longer. Right, yeah, you would just kind of wing it depending on where you think it, it, it falls. Okay. You know, the duration of a fatal poison is forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. oh, okay. Because it kills you and you're dead. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, I like um, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say that I like I like the idea of um, it being something. If I could put it on, say, like a weapon or something they touch, and I do it stealthily, like, and just sort of hope that at some point that night they also touch it. That would be a good way to administer some kind of like. Um, Paralysis. So maybe I do want to go uh, the route of um, undetectable topical thing. Un undetectable? Is that what you said? Yeah. Um, like a powder. To, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So do you want to get lucky or establish that that's the fact? And then, sorry, so get lucky is just like a luck roll. Yeah, just a luck roll. Um, I guess the, dis the difference is there's not always this choice. It just seems like in this instance, it makes sense that either you're lucky in the sense that like, oh, it's exactly the kind of poison I need for the situation, or you are you're trying to establish that it's a, a fact that this poison works that way. Um, if you fail the established roll, you will get to mark intelligence. <laughs> if you fail uh, the luck roll, it's the opposite of what you want. Not the opposite, but it's like, you know, you want something that's a powder, it's actually going to be more like a, a beeswaxy substance or something like that. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> something more I guess I wonder, um, and then if I fail a luck roll, can you still burn luck to add to it? No, 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 no. That's the other, yeah. I mean, mechanically, it just makes more sense to roll intelligence, but... Uh, I like the idea that it's the opposite of what I thought it was. <laughs> yeah, if you play your cards right, you can hope for a really crappy thing, but then you get a really good thing. I want it to be the size of a brick. <laughs> and you have to gnaw on it. <laughs> it's a poison popsicle, and it says poison on it. <laughs> um, yeah, your call. What are you going to roll? I'll probably do intelligence because I think that um, I think it makes more sense to have established that it was this Sure. Thing. You're a poisoner. Of course, you know all this stuff. You guys, let me tell you about this poison. And go ahead, roll the dice. Oh, I will say, hold on, hold on. You can actually use cunning on this. Because you can use cunning for anything related to poison. So your knowledge of poison, you can actually use cunning to boost this roll. And the nice thing about cunning is you can spend it after you roll. Yeah. You nailed it. Or you will nail it. <laughs> Don is calculating. Sorry, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Sorry. So if I um, I rolled a three, so that's <laughs> oh, not good. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just like, how do I get to seven? How many? How much cutting do you have? Just two. two. Yeah, just the two. Yeah. So save that, but you get the mark intelligence. Oh, thank you. All these threes. Yeah, so what you ended up with when you made, this is the um, lock finger, right? And you had those ingredients yeah. and you boiled them down. Yeah, so what you ended right. up with is like a, that's uh, uh, yeah, like a hard nugget, like a piece of jaggery, like a piece of, um, um, and I guess the disadvantage to it is that it's a hard nugget that has to be ingested. Like somebody has to actually, Taken into their body, and the, the reason it takes twenty to thirty minutes is because that's how long it takes their body to actually process it. 
in their digestive system. Um, and you've got one dose of it, right? Correct. So one dose is... Well, actually, I drew two circles. Okay, sorry. Okay, you have two uses of it. Um, okay. So, and, and each one is like a little chunk of, I guess it's kind of a, a slightly sticky, um, you had to, you know, you had to boil it down over the fire and uh, um, I don't know what you keep it in. You must keep it in some kind of little um, container that keeps it from getting all over stuff. But uh, yeah, it's two, it's, it's two little hard chunks, like, um, you know, uh, the size of a like a like an inch, I guess an inch in diameter. And somebody That's has to okay. eat that. They have to eat that whole thing for it to happen. So, I think the usual approach is usually to like chop it into pieces to get them to eat it without noticing. But it's kind of a hard one, yeah. And it has a really strong taste. Wow. But it does. It does the job. You know, not every poison can go down easy. This was I'm like a, was this an established role? Is this a role that Donna or Muirin uh, has to make every time a poison is finished? So um, like figure out what form it takes? Only if we're creating a new poison in the world. Oh, okay. Right, this was, we, we last session we came up with this idea of, she wanted a poison that would do, that would paralyze and we named it Lockfinger. And yeah. figure that out, but we didn't figure exactly what form. Now that the form is becoming relevant to the story, we needed to figure out what form would it, did it take. Okay, okay. Um, and we could have established that before, but we didn't. It just so happens that right now we needed to figure that out. Yeah. Right. Um, I would recommend it's almost yeah. midnight for you all. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I would say let's start off the next session with the big meeting when all of our mental acuity is like top notch. Great. Um, but I guess to round off the conversation about like what we kind of like go in there, what sort of energy we go in there with, like Taimi is, Taimi sees the wisdom in Weirin's words, you know, you know a, a massacre would send a message. And the idea of massacring is complicated for Taimi. Uh, you know, I don't know if your wisdom is going to stay my hand if a word keeper is at the end of my arrow shaft, like if I'm looking down the sights at them. Yeah. But I see the wisdom in your words, and I think that they should, we should endeavor to do that. Um, but if it came down to it, I, I, I wouldn't be able to stop myself. <laughs> what do you say when it, if it came down to it? Do you mean if you were in a position where you had reason to kill one, you would kill one? If I if I had like yeah, if I have like a clear shot and it looks like you know they're not completely helpless and they're still doing damage, like I, I would take I would take the shot. Okay, got it. Um. <clears throat> anyway, let's just. I'm gonna write a note that we have. Um. At Gaia, at Maya. A T M A J A. Maya. Uh, lock. Yep. Um, us. And who's the leader of the goat people? Of the goat riders? Oh, I, I need a name for the leader of the goat riders. Excuse me. Let me figure that out real quick. Uh, is there anything else anybody wants to um, uh, bring up at this point about um, knowing that that's what's going to happen next? Um, I was just stra thinking strategy. Wondering if it makes sense to try to sneak in and sabotage their weapons or poison their food before hand or if it just means having um one group come from one direction and another and you guys uh would be potentially coming from another direction to try to surprise them like a surprise physical assault versus a 
stealthy nighttime sabotage thing or both e- e- yeah either a sabotage and then a and then an attack or just a a frontal attack and then a surprise um rear attack kind of thing okay so those are options on the table for discussion when the meeting happens um yeah but would it be fair to but say Moirin being the stealth yeah go ahead Moirin being the stealthy one i'm gonna say Moirin being the stealthy one maybe you would have the uh the the biggest say in what you think you'd be up for <laughs> or would make sense i'd be a little bit afraid that if you did a stealthy mission that somebody would discover you and then they would be better prepared for an attack yeah right we'd have to um pretty much think of a really like flawless stealth plan if if like that was the way to go um because otherwise yeah they could blow the whole thing um john the leader of the goat riders is tejdeep t-e-j-d-e-e-p um so i would suggest if they're you know homework between now and next session if you took like five or ten minutes to think about to think through some ideas Mm -hmm. and then if you come to the table with those ideas then that conversation could go a little further there is the the danger when you're planning an operation like this that you can kind of descend into like um a lot of contingency planning and all that and um as john and i have discovered (laughs) in the (laughs) had a vampire campaign where there was an enormous amount of planning which was actually really fun and it can be really fun um but it's always good if you come fresh to the a table with some ideas about some clear ideas about what you think would be a good strategy and then and then it's a little easier to have a conversation about what the best plan of action would be and of course um uh at maya and Locke may have some opinions to offer as well mm-hmm. um so i'll do my homework on that front too um I like in this era of like uh, telecommuting and Zoom and Skype meetings, uh, we're planning to role play like an IRL meeting. <laughs> it's like in a big conference room. <laughs> Living the real fantasy. Did you guys get the memo about the hostage situation? <laughs> but I sent around an email. I hope everybody got that memo. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking hostage. Everybody's clear on that, right? Um. Uh, Kuan, you're muted. Kuan. Kuan, you're muted. <laughs> um, am I yeah. understanding that generally speaking, despite, you know, in spite of Taimi's, we know what might happen with Taimi if the situation uh, presents itself. The general plan is you want to take live hostages. Um, as an overall goal, the goal would be all eight of these people captured. Is that fair? Or not living. <laughs> or not what? Living. <laughs> Secondary <laughs> effect. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that would be something we would, I would counsel with the, um, with the town about it. Okay. So that they are, their wishes are yeah, I mean, it's true. They might come in, you know, spears of blazing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I just wanted to know, it's a good to know what your goals are so that I can consider it that, like, how will the town feel and all that. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Do they have, do they have horses? They do not. <laughs> um, the, neither do the corcane. <laughs> As far as you know, horses don't exist. <laughs> okay. You guys have never, people tend to well, get, don't, sorry, what? I don't even know what a horse is then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you guys saw that goat rider coming towards you, it was pretty shocking. Oh, okay. When you've seen kids, you've, you know, kids have climbed on goats, you know, sure, back home, you've got animals that kids play around on, but you've never seen somebody riding one in the way that this person was. 
Um, wow. I, don't, I don't think anybody. I don't think you guys. I don't think you guys got any XP this week unless you failed the roll. Uh, no alignment goals, right? Oh no, traits probably got fulfilled. What yeah, traits and uh, uh, discovering new things about the world. Yeah. Okay. So uh, traits. Uh, Timey. Uh, I was uh, irritated or irritable about the um, word givers. Oh yeah, for oh for sure. The whole team getting a lot of mileage out of your hatred for those guys for sure. <laughs> um, uh, Weirin, I feel like was uh, very respectful of the Venati. Um. Yeah, and then I feel like, do you think I was trying to be lawful in trying to make us n not kill the, uh... Yes. Or, I mean, it may be is not chaos, but, um, I don't know. Maybe Order, I think, it, yeah, yeah, I feel like, um, there's some kind of imposition of order in, like, less killing okay. and, wait, and you are you're lawful yeah oh, okay yeah. i just haven't done anything lawful Th that was yes no that was very lawful to say let's not murder these people <laughs> okay <laughs> and not only that but you were really clear about like look if we do that it's a declaration of war and what is yeah. war within chaos right like we need to maintain control of this situation that was yeah that was super that was actually super okay. awesome um, cool. so totally. Oh my God. An alignment XP. Amazing. <laughs> uh, how about Paiviki? Traits? Um, uh, she, she was, I think she was bold in a couple of situations. Yeah, um, standing up in front of everybody and yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if the alternate um, could be said of trying to disrupt the established order. Um, of of the Corkines by um, advocating um, uh, kicking them out of town. If the established order is is them um, conquering this land yep. and all the different places, then uh, disrupting it. Yeah, um, if at Maya before we came here, at Maya was like, we're just gonna bend over the barrel. Uh huh. And, yep. And now we've diverted that. Yep, and then I mean, but we haven't done. You haven't, we haven't done, done it yet, but I, but we've tried to convince them to do it and get them on board. So, I don't know. Yeah, I think that. And are you the only one who is chaotic? Tiny also. Yeah, I think that once shit goes down, you guys will be getting some XP for that stuff. Right now, in the planning phase, I feel like the thing that was more effective about or more XP worthy of what Muirin did it was like. Let's kill some people. Let's kill some people. And everyone's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> let's realign our thinking towards, you know, and, but I think that because the thing that's going to happen is going to be this disruption of order for sure, that that's, you know, you guys are lining up for some chaotic uh, experience points, which I know is the whole point of this plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah I fill in those dots. <laughs> I want those dots, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um did you make an exciting discovery oh yeah we we saw the, the we, we met saw the ocean <laughs> yeah and then what were you gonna say donna oh just meeting another elf was kind of cool yeah 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 that was a big deal sweet yeah so everybody gets an xp for making at least one exciting discovery uh did you overcome a difficult obstacle i would actually say convincing uh, at maya to go along was a difficult obstacle because she was not, there's a lot at stake. Um, and I feel like there was an enormous, there was, Paiviki gave the big overture at the bonfire, and then you guys had to have a further conversation. So I think you, and you overcame that. So everybody gets XP for that. I don't think any memorable booty was acquired unless six bowls of mead. <laughs> hey, we made a lot of plans for getting a lot of booty. Uh, so. Someday. More treasures. Okay, great. Anybody, where are you guys at level wise? I don't even really know where you're at. I'm three away from level three. Okay. Same. I'm four, I'm four away. Okay, so you're all close. Um, awesome. All right. 
that's that. Any closing uh, commentary? Do we have a plan for another game? I don't think it's in the calendar yet. Yeah. Did we did we uh, agree on one though? No. no. Okay. This is the last one in the in the most recent. Okay, great. Then I'll send around another poll for that. Okay. Write that down. Thanks for telling me that. Are you guys still like busy? <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually am super busy. <laughs> Oh, because of um, homeschooling and everything. And I'm still teaching. Like it's just, it's just remote. Yeah. It's kind of more work to do. Like, yeah. Um, uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are full up for me. Okay. For the for, for the foreseeable future. Okay. Um. Yeah. So generally, what about the Thursday and Friday might be something to shoot for in general? Mon Mon Monday, Thursday, and Friday are, are, are all like tentatively open. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, yeah. boy, boy, howdy, have my plans really <laughs> evaporated. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, every day is open. Yeah. Okay, great. So I will leave... Uh, um, so I'll do Thursday through Sunday will be on our optional. I can't do Mondays because of class prep, but um, I'll send around a poll for that. Great. Okay, and if you guys Thank haven't, you. the the rules were just recently updated. If you have the link to the Dropbox, the um, uh, John, that there's the the perceive has been replaced, craft has been rewritten, um, and I made some other modifications. I don't know if it's worth downloading it, um, but the rules have been updated. Yeah. I also um, wrote a whole new, so there's a whole new dungeon generation system, and there's a magic item generator, which Jan, I think you would enjoy. It was very yeah. similar to the spell generator, nice. but you roll up uh, random magic items. Like wand of, awesome. or, or yeah, Asgard's wand of burning flesh. Yeah, exactly. So cool. Icy wand flesh. Yeah. Cosmic flesh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, um, sorry, go ahead. I was just wondering if there's a way um, to create magic items, some sort of crafting um, combination with magic spells that you have in mind. It's pretty much free form at this point, but the way crafting works is if you have the resources and the skills, you can do it. So if you convince, you know, if you convincingly say like, well, I studied all this magic and I, I know this Smith who can make a sword for me. So we're going to work together to make a magic sword. You can totally do that. But it's very much about the discussion between, there's no formalized mechanics for specifically for magic. Items. Right. Yeah. Um, these are the ones, the first ones I rolled up after I finished my tables. These are, these are the, the first time with no edits. The Storm Wand, Ildio's Iron Dust, Tolbalia's Shivering Vambraces. <laughs> Wall of Intellect, <laughs> Elzeric's Song of Lead, which is a scroll, uh, Tubtine's Potion of Health, <laughs> it's pretty straightforward, <laughs> The White Ring of Wrath, Oh yeah. Sarah Dread's Potion, don't know what that does, <laughs> The Stone of Judgment, and Baldred's Terrible Cloak. <laughs> <laughs> Those are awesome. That was pretty psyched. How are the how is a wall an item? That's yeah. I throw I threw some words in there like thorn and wall and fang to try to get people to think to imagine what that might be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah so I, the wall is right. like, maybe it's like a shield or something, you know? Yeah, right. or, or even like some sort of talisman you just kind of like stick on a wall. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And thus that becomes the wall of intellect. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really smart wall. The big okay. brain. Yeah. Um, nice. Yeah, okay. that's right. Cool. I'll check out these rules. That's a wrap. Yeah, yeah I want to have a sidebar at some point. Um, just because I, I still, I would love to have like an advanced move that like really caters to archery. Like a lot of them are still, they're all based on strength. Um, oh, that's a cute little cat. Is it like a cat? A little calico?
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The primary feeling with fighter is that it's right. The strength is a lot of those moves come off of that as opposed to dex. Yeah, like um, deflect blows is useless to me. Smash is useless to me. Yep. And uh, shield bearer is useless to me because that's like not the type of person that an archer typically like in the battle. Right. Right. Uh, so I'd be really, I'd be really interested in, in. I mean, I still have master weapon, which lets me use that. You know, I still have. Yeah, I mean, there's still things I can use, uh, but it would I would love to like try to work with you to make like one like archery specific. Yeah, for sure, and I, I absolutely want that to be in there because I, you know, the feeling was I want a fighter to be able to be on different parts of that spectrum. So we mm -hmm. need to make that more fun for somebody in that position for sure. Yeah, um, I'm also tinkering with four kind of advanced classes that would be like the ranger, paladin, monk. And then one other one, oh. um, kind of classic D and D second wave classes. It's a yeah. little it, it gets a little bit in the way of what I like about the basic four is that they can be, yeah. Um, so I'm I, you know, um, but it would be nice to bring something more dex focused for sure. Into that. I mean, I think that you could you could just like instead of like introducing a whole new play book, just like expand the advanced rules, the advanced moves, and have more. Like, I remember you used to have advanced moves that had, like, two spots to fill up. Yeah, uh-huh. You know, like, have, yeah, under fighter, have, like, a paladin one that has, like, you know, two spots and holy strike or whatever. Right, right. We would, we, you'd still have the elegance of, like, the four classes, but have, like, a little bit of aspiration. <laughs> yeah, <some custom. laughs> yeah, right. Another thing you could do is you could have some advanced moves that are available to anybody that could potentially justify having them. I think you had that with the, um, the ones that you had for adventuring and yeah. um, delving into dungeons and stuff. So yeah, if you yeah. had advanced moves that were like, um, sort of like a, um, um, a what, what, what do you call, um, a ranger kind of skill that a fight, if a fighter got it, then he'd be kind of like a rangery fighter yeah. without necessarily having to become a thief. Sure. You know, like a skill like, like tracking or something like that. Yeah. Or, yeah. And that might be a I nice home for skills that maybe affect things that aren't combat oriented. Like, you know, we had that problem with hunting last session where like based on like a not superb role, I like didn't have a great hunting and it felt like I should do better <laughs> um, or like one person should be able to at least feed everyone for a day on a, on a like even mediocre hunt. So I know that, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that this could become like a very sprawling conversation, but like, you know, a, a central pool of feats or, or advanced moves that anybody could take. I think that's a, yeah. you know, one for performance, one for crafting, one for, um, but I, I know that that kind of moves away from the elegance of like the four classes. Yeah, but it could certainly be like an advanced thing where, and it would be, you could easily do it as like an insert, a half sheet insert that you just keep inside your playbook and it would have all those moves on it. So everybody would have the option of, you know what I mean? You could play the game straight, but you could also incorporate those if need be. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, and this is just great. Say, Go ahead. Sorry. You could also say like, it could be one of those like after level three kind of things um if it was kind of more um uh yeah more of an advanced type of a move yeah 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 okay i will okay. making notes and i'll i'll tinker around with that stuff great um, do you mind sharing that link again to sure. yeah i'll send it around to you guys and Thank you. I'll do that after I um, have to close up shop. Will do. Okay. I think it's bedtime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah thanks, y'all. Watching this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, guys. Awesome. So fun. Everybody who's watching yeah. this, wash their hands. <laughs> yeah. Let's all let's all wash our hands. Right. Well, good hand washing break. <laughs> all right. Good night. All right. Love you. Good night. Good night.